Hello, welcome to Motley Muse. I'm Yvette Stauffer and I painted this beautiful painting. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it and I know you will too. In this video, I'm going to go step by step and show you exactly how I painted it. At the end of the painting, if you would love to share your painting, I would love to see it. I'm totally into art and I would love to see how you painted this painting. A little odd and a little weird, but trust me, in the end, it's going to work out just fine the way we want it. Now these are going to be two hands and I'm going to make the arms. So this is a basic rough outline as to what I want to do. Of course, I will be tweaking it many, many times. So I'm just making a rough outline. Here's one arm and here's another and it's going to get a little bit fatter as it goes up. Here's another one. Make sure there's the heart. So I'm going to make sure, you know what, I'm going to make that line a little shorter. Now when I'm drawing this, I'm going really super, super easy with my pencil. I am not the world's best drawer. I really am not. All this is, is a rough idea estimate of what I want and where I'm going to place my hands. That's all this is. All of this is going to get painted over with, so it doesn't matter. It's a basic outline. You're going to make these a little shorter. Okay, I'm going to start making my hands. It's going to be very super easy. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to have this as a thumb, and then I'm going to have another thumb here, which means I'm going to have to move my arm. This is going to come around and start being a finger. I know, I know it's rough. Don't worry. It's going to happen. It just takes a little bit of practice back and forth, back and forth. And finally, when we get a rough, basic idea of what we like and where we want our stuff to be, that's where it's going to be. But until then, we have to be patient with ourselves. That's about the basic idea. Let me go ahead and get all the little dusty things off. Yep, 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 three. That's it. Now I can keep fussing and fussing with my drawing, but this is a blueprint, so there's no need to fuss with any of this, really. I'm going to go ahead and work with my background. Now as I work with my background, I'm going to define the, the hands. They're going to start coming together. It's going to start working. Trust me. So I'm going to start with a little bit of blue, dark blue. I'm going to go ahead and start with the background. I am preferring to use this bad boy. Yep, the big one, the big rectangular one. Now, if you wanted to do a round, you could, or oops, that's not my round. This is my round. If you want to do a round, you can, but I just find doing the background with the square kind of makes it cooler and more impressionistic and modern. So I'm going to go ahead and just make little squares. Notice that I'm making a lot of swooshes. Yep. I'm going to go here and get the sides as I go. Now I'm being super rough with the background, okay? I'm not going to put a lot of energy and fuss. This is a time in my painting where I can get all my stresses out for the day and all my stresses about painting this painting. It's going to come together. It's going to happen. I'm going to go in here. Just work it and work it.
Now I'm going to make this the male hand and it's going to be a little bit bigger and thicker and this is going to be the female hand over here. So because of that I want to make sure that I do give space over here and that I really don't go over it because for the skin I am going to be painting my hubby in Mii's hands and he is very light skin toned and so am I. So because of that I'm going to be very careful that I don't go over to the um I don't go over too much and paint where it's going to be really light because then I'm going to have to put lots and lots of layers to cover up the dark color. Now you can use whatever skin tone you want really I mean however it is that you're going and like who and what and you can have two feminine two male hands I mean really hands are hands everybody's got hands that look alike for the most part. I was asked a long time ago when I was in art school and they said what's harder to do faces or hands and my personal preference is that I feel that uh, faces are harder than hands why because our hands are pretty much the same anatomy a lot of people have very similar looking hands um, yeah there are differences and whatnot but I just feel like a face just has so much more uniqueness to it um, so don't stress out like don't have any anxiety about this painting or anything this painting is gonna be so super cool and like I said before many times over and over again the magic doesn't happen in the first 10 minutes you really got to let this happen let it work let it do its job Remember to calm your monkey mind, breathe and relax, and just let the paint happen. I've noticed that paintings that have brush strokes in them tend to be more eye-catching. And for me, because I am a working artist, they tend these type of paintings tend to sell a little bit better when there are brush strokes in them. I am trying to make a painting and not a photograph. If I wanted this to be a photograph, I'd be more specific and I'd really be working with the realism and taking a lot of time. But I'm going for impressionism and a little bit of modern. So for me, I don't really have to put a whole lot of like analyzing every little step and every little thing that I do. Now the bigger brush you use, obviously the faster it's gonna go. If you are not quite caught up to me, don't worry. You could always rewind this video. Work at your own pace. And if you want a different color, go ahead. Add a different color. You could do purples, yellows. I mean, pretty much any color you want. Whatever is like the color that you're going for, you know, like in your house. Like what is it going to, what color matches? Do you have throw pillows that are like all yellow? Then do some yellows. You could just leave it white if you wanted to leave the background white. I do find if you're going to hang it on a white wall that sometimes what's going to happen is that uh, it kind of blends and you don't really, it doesn't stand out as look at me, I'm a painting, I'm fabulous. There we go. Now see how the hand is starting to take form. Now. I have noticed, I mean, well, if you have the opportunity, you know, stare at your hands, stare at, if you have the opportunity to have somebody be a hand model for you and to just like stand there all day while you paint, that's totally awesome. At this moment, I do not have somebody that is willing to just hang out for a couple hours while I paint this, so I'm just going to have to look at my own hands. I've noticed that the top of people's hands tend to be flat. So we're going to try to make these hands both appear as though they are flat. And then we also want our flat fingers, right? Now I'm going to have to cover up that line a little bit to try to get what I want. See? Flat and flat. Going to make this guy a little flat too. Now, if you were going to do more fingers, which I'm not, because I'm trying to keep this a little bit easy. I'm trying to tell the story with the minimal amount of effort, so I'm not going to add more fingers. If you want to, it's the exact same thing of what we're doing now. The only thing is, you would leave it wider. 
I used to think hands were so difficult until I actually sat down and started taking a moment and doing them. I'm going to go ahead and break up these little lines. I made a few lines over here and I don't want there to be like this ray coming out from the hands. There we go. It's happening. You know what? I've, yep, this skinny little hand and then this one's a little bit bigger. My husband's a really tall guy, so he's, he's, he's got very big features. And one of the things I've noticed too, when doing hands, I've noticed that, um, like if you make them so that they're not identical twins, they tend to read much better. And it's like, oh, okay, those are hands. Make sure I get that line very straight. Okay. I'm going to take three seconds here and turn my canvas every once in a while, especially when you're trying to do modernistic type stuff. It is a good idea to get a different view and a different angle of what you're painting. make sure I get that now the more if I'm going for realism I'm going to make sure that these lines are exactly as perfect as I can get them and straight and no bumpy lines however that's not really my style so I am going to try to make them as straight as I can but I'm not going to overstress it and be here all day fussing about this line and all the little the brush strokes of where all the little hairs are on the brush I'm just going to kind of let it be I'm gonna let it be what it is. It's its own thing. Its own little personality. I'm gonna give that a little angle. I do like to paint my paintings as I'm going um, on the sides just for later to make it easier on me. And I feel that the painting, it's like more, it's got a wraparound type of vibe going on to it. I'm not really caking on the paint, but I am being very liberal with the paint that I'm adding. That's about good. I'm liking it. It's working. Okay. Oops, I got my thumb in there. I'm going to wipe that out to get my thumb mark off. Perfect. Okay, so... I'm going to take one last little look here. I'm still going to be, I'm still refining it and still working it and still working it. But for right now, I think I like what I see. I'm happy with what I got. Flat, 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 flat. Yep. I'm not too happy with this right now. I think the reason why is because it needs to be a little bit flatter. Now we're going to do this a little bit flatter, but we still want to have a knuckle. So, little lines. Oh, geez, I'm going to have to paint over that. Okay, that's working. Maybe we could go down here a little bit deeper. Just a tiny bit. Remember, this, this hand is going to be a little bit skinnier. Yeah, that works. I like it. So now on my canvas or on my palette what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some white and I'm going to lighten up the blue and then I'm going to go back over top of what I've just done lightly to make marks on purpose to make it like very textured so remember if you add a lot of blue you're going to get a really dark blue but if you add a lot of white and just a little bit of blue you're going to get a light blue now I'm going to make sure that I mix a good quantity because I'm going to kind of use a lot here. And I'm going to make sure that I mix it really well so it's not all streaky with the colors. So I get quite a good consistency on the blue. At this point, I'm really not going to be blending on the canvas. So that's why I want to make sure it mixes wonderfully well. 
I'm gonna wipe some of that off. Oh, oh, that's okay. I got a little, that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead. When I wiped it off, I got some of the dark blue in there. Didn't want that. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but sparingly. I'm just gonna add marks. Just little marks. I'm gonna be turning my brush many different ways. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna give a texture and make it more 3D and more modernistic looking. Because I'm trying to tell the story of these hands. So I want that to be the focal point. I want the background to just kind of blend and to die off. And I'm notice how I'm going over and everywhere that I see that there is a little bit of white, I'm trying to cover that up with the paint. So like a little white from the canvas. And I'm trying to make sure that I'm, oops, you know what I forgot to do? I didn't do dark in there. <gasps> oh, okay. We we'll have to remedy that. That's okay. Wasn't thinking. It happens all the time. Those are happy accidents. Now I could just go with the light blue right now and do this, but the background's gonna look a little bit different from what I've got going on already. So I'm gonna choose an option not to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and get that dark blue first. I'm gonna make sure I cover up some of the sides. And don't cover up too much of the dark blue of what you did before. I mean, let some of it be, let it have its moment. Now, I'm gonna go back and I'm going to do little X's. And I'm gonna kind of blend a little bit. And this is dry brushing. I haven't added any more paint. I'm just kind of blending and moving it around and whatever happens, happens. I'm just letting it be, letting life be what it is. Some of my paint's already really dry on here. I want some areas that are really dark and I blue and I want some that are really dark white and back and forth in many different shades. So be careful you don't go into your arm. Oops, a little bit too blendy blendy over here. That's okay. If that happens, we just blendy blendy over here and we just do more until it's unevenly even. Make sure you get the sides as you go just cause Make it all happen so you don't have to do it later. This is a really good way to make any kind of a background that's very super easy and basic. And really it's not. It looks like, ooh, she put so much effort into that. But really, if you see, it's not. It's, it's straightforward to the point. It is what it is. Okay, not loving that blend. What are we gonna do? Make this area, try to match that a little bit, and then make some of this, try to match this area so it looks like it's kind of a flow. Okay, I'm gonna go back with a little bit of dark and go back over and just kind of blend and swoosh everywhere back and forth. And when you get something you like, stop. See how it's common? It's like blending with color without actually back and forth with the color because it's a very, I want the whites to stand out and I want the blues to stand out. I'm gonna go ahead and look at my painting from the other side. Yeah, I'm liking it, you know? I think it's, I think I did good. Make sure I get close to the skin without really going over the skin. That's always difficult. I'm gonna add a little bit of blue in here. I felt like it got too dark. It is okay. You wanna have random chaos. Just nothing too blendy. I am loving this background. Everything about this background, I think, is just totally cool. I'm digging it. I've got some white streaks, dry brush in some of these spots just really trying to be a little bit of everywhere i love it okay so i'm going to go ahead wash my brush in the water let it be what it is 
Now, I recommended this. Oh, oh my goodness, you know what I forgot? Again, it happened to me a second time I had a happy little accident. This painting's gonna be so awesome. The more happy accidents you have, the better. So, okay, I forgot to fill in that heart just a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm covering it and I'm being very mindful. Being very mindful with where I'm putting the dark. Now I do wanna keep some fattiness on the hand so I'm not going to follow the original line that I had. I'm gonna make the fingers really skinny, which is totally cool. I'm gonna make the fingers really skinny on this side because I mean, in the end of the day, they are kind of very similar, these hands. Okay, that works for me. Okay, so now this part is the meaty part. So because it's the meaty part, it needs to be a little bit thicker, which is that. And it kind of, they don't come to perfect little circles. They're kind of like, not so much, right? I mean, you, yeah, okay, if I stretch out my hands, yeah, but I mean, we're kind of doing this. So this is what I'm going for. I'm going to make that a little straight, kind of, just because. Lots of straight straightness. That's working. Okay, so now we're going to be here, right? So it's the same thing. Make sure I go a little fat. A little fatty fatness right there. And we're going to go in. And we want that thumb to be kind of thick, but it's rounded. Rounded, flat. Oh, there we go. I'm getting it. It's a happening. Slowly but surely it'll happen. Okay, now so it matches a little bit for the rest of the background. I'm going to do one of these bits. Try to see if I can. I don't want to blend too much on the canvas. I feel like I'm blending too much. Stop! I always got to tell myself stop every so often. I feel like sometimes I can double over extra think. And then I feel like when I do that, my paintings are no good. So just let it be, let it happen, let it be what it is. It doesn't match. So maybe if we do some more, let's see, does that match? It's getting there. Could always take some of that color and add it over here. And by doing that, you see, you see what we're doing, the science. Then it now, doesn't it feel, because I took that colors that I was working with and I moved them over here, so now it feels like it was meant to be. There we go. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, wash my brush. Um, I don't think I'm going to use this one again, so I'm going to go ahead and just clean it and wipe it out. And I don't prefer to let my... Um, my paints paint brushes be in the water like a million hours i'm not really into that so take it out wash it put it aside i won't need it anymore now i fully completely all the way this i feel helps me so i recommend that you do the same thing to completely dry what you got going on here so i'm going to take a few minutes and do that
pretty good. I don't feel like it's all the way completely dry, but it's good for what I need for right now. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to use my palette. Now I have a light tone and I'm kind of trying to make this me kind of deal. So I'm going to stick with my colors. I'm going to go ahead with a raw sienna and add some to my palette. I might need more actually. We're going to, yeah. And then a little bit of, I'm going to add white to the middle of my palette. The reason why is so that I can have, I can bring them over and do mixing. I could have other colors, bring them over and do different shades with mixing with, with white. Okay. Let's see. We got that. Let's see. And we want to add a little bit of pink in there because but you know what, let's get the base tone down first. We'll work on that a little bit later. I always like to start with a dark undertone first and then I like to go lighter. Now this is, it sounds hard, but it's not. We're gonna do a base coat and basically, I like to think of the arms as cylinders. When I'm painting, I like to, um, I like to think of like, squares, triangles, rectangles, that kind of stuff, spheres. That's how I was taught. And I don't know, I just, it works. I've tried to not, and then everything looks like an alien. So I'm thinking this as a seal cylinder. Now, let's see. It really depends um, which one you want first, the, like what one you want to be first on the top of like here. But right now, I'm going to get the base coat, and then we're going to kind of think of that. Now, it wasn't on purpose or anything. It just so happens that, I don't know, my husband, he's very, his tone is really close to mine. And so, I'm going to kind of keep that going. Now, I know this is dark. I know that my hands are not this dark, but trust me, we're going to fade, we're going to add colors. It's going to work out. Just have a little faith. Go over here and make sure I cover up some of that white. There we go. I'm going to bring that down in a little bit. I'm choosing to do the arms first because I feel that the arms, it's very easy. I mean, they're just cylinders, whereas the hands have got more going on there. Now, the reason why this brown is staying the color it is is because I dried that blue really well. Had I have not dried the blue really well it would really be mixing and it just wouldn't look right. Also this is a really good study to work for shadows because that's really what I'm creating here. All this middle section I'm painting right now, I fully intend to paint right over with other colors. It's just right now it helps me. Baby steps. And I'm going to be going with this, and I'm going to make this pretty cool. I'm, I mean, I've painted this quite often, many times, and I feel that I'm pretty good at what I'm doing here. So at any time that you are, like, stressing out, and you're like, I can't do this. Just stop. Let your painting be what it is. I mean, if this is, if you have not painted in years and years since you were a little kid in school, and this is how far you get, that's totally cool. You know, it'll be very modernistic looking. Oh, I went too big on that. Oh, geez. It'll be very modern looking and uh, totally cool. I am going to add more colors. So I'm going to go... I'm basically starting this easy, 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 and then the more time that passes, the harder this is going to be, and the more layers. I like to think of painting as a cake, and I'm adding on different layers, and that's what I'm going to be doing with these colors. So, let's say you wanted a light skin tone, and this is as far as you wanted to go with your painting, then just add a light skin tone. Don't do the dark undertone. I am trying to keep with the idea of going with the arms.
like going in the direction that they're going into. Okay, I'm just gonna, and then we'll go back over it. How about that, right there? Just so I can get these colors to look good. And then we'll go back and fix these lines here. There we go. Easy, easy, easy. Okay, well, we've got base coats going. I'm gonna come over here. I do feel like this thumb got a little big, so I'm probably gonna wanna go back with some blue. I'm gonna go with this little tiny brush just to kind of help me with my fingers over here. Make the thumb a little bit smaller. A little squarish. See, help me with the thumb. We'll work and work it. Yeah, I like this one. This one's working. Oh, geez, I went too far in right there. Okay, so now we're going to come around. We're going to leave it a little meaty, and then we're going to give it kind of some straightness. We want straight here. Yep, a little straightness. There we go. I will have to go and touch all that up. I will do that. But right now I'm just mostly trying to work to figure out where this is going. So there's a lot of straight little areas to make this hand what it is. Go ahead and cover up the top of the hand. Now if you had tattoos on the skin, I would recommend doing the skin first. Getting the skin how you want it to be and then going in with the tattoos. Uh, or if you are an amazing drawer, go ahead and just draw it all out and then only cover the skin area. Make sure there's a knuckle right there. And then only cover the skin area of where, uh, where the, where the tattoo is kind of not. That is one approach. There are many different ways in which to do this. But typically, I mean, my husband has no tattoos and I don't have any tattoos. So I'm trying to make this like our little portrait deal. Now I am aware down here about the nails. When this all dries, I'll go and do it. The nails are gonna be the very last thing that I'm choosing to do. Which is, you know, I've painted this a lot and I feel that that's a good order. Oh, I noticed at this angle, I got some white spots over here. I need to cover that up. Now let's see. I'm gonna need to make this hand a little bit more beefy. I feel as though it's not working. So let's see what we can do. Now I'm going to make this a little rounder. There is a knuckle. You've got to keep that in mind. A little rounder. It's a little fatty area. Let's see. I do want to keep this guy flat. Yep. And then this one, I think I'm going to come in a little bit into that blue. Yeah, there we go. I'm liking that. There is going to be a little bit of a knuckle there, so it's going to protrude just a little bit. A little, uh, a little corner. And that's kind of going to be straight for a minute. Okay, now the thumb. This is gonna be a knuckle. There's gonna be a fatty tissue. And then we're gonna kind of come straight down. The nail will be here, but for now, just so I can start getting this happy, and it's gonna be kind of fleshy a little bit. It's okay. Flesh happens. 
There we go. I like it. For a base coat, I think that's really nice. Now we're going to continue working. So, uh, I had to switch this up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of touch it up and fix it to where I need to have this so it's blending how it should be. Now, if you feel that you're still having an error, I recommend that you wait and, or while well, you allow your paint to fully dry the brown and then go back over. Like if you have to, oh, you made it too fat and thick on that area. Let the brown completely dry and then go back over and touch up with the blue. Make sure that we got matchy match, matchy match. Yep, that's working. I like it. Okay. So now to make things way easier, I'm going to start with the arms. There we go. I'm going to start doing these. So since this one is behind and this one is up front, I'm going to work on this first. And when I get it all super wild, then I'm going to go do this one. Now I am going to this is the easiest way. I've done this a million, million times. And to me, what I'm gonna show you here is the easiest way I've found to do this. I'm gonna take a little bit of brown and put it into white. Remember how I said about having room on your plate to mix? Make sure that when you're squirting out your paint that you're not just taking up all your palettes so that way you can have lots of different spaces with different colors. This is making a really nice, really nice peach. Lots of white, big highlight. I'm going to put it here, right in the middle. Yep, very daring. Right in the middle, just a line. And I'm going to do a little bit here. Because the light source is going to be coming straight down this way. Straight this way. So because of that, it goes right there. So now I'm going to blend... Blendy, blendy, blend. Blendy, blend. If I go over, that's okay. Just try not to go over too much. I'm gonna leave a little highlight down there too. Okay, so I got that going. Now I'm going to create another little bit of a color. I want to have a little bit of peachy peachness going on, which, hmm, let's see. Let's add some orange. I know, right? Sounds weird. Totally sounds weird. But trust me, it makes sense. I'm going to bring over some white. Oh, geez. Oops. And I'm going... Bring that white and I'm going to mix myself a nice little peachy tone. Yeah, I'm liking that color. And I'm going to add some. Add some little peachiness to it. There we go. Peachy, peachy tones. I am kind of caking it on a little thick because I'm blending on the canvas and I am working with acrylic paint so they will dry easily and very fast. Okay, so now I'm going to wipe off my brush and on the ends here, I'm going to blend. So the goal is that I want the edges of the arms to be very dark. And then I want the middle of the arm to be very light. I want there to be many different colors. The more shades of blending that you get, the more awesomer and cooler this painting is going to be. And it's just going to be awesome. And that's what we want. We want a whole lot of awesome. So we'll go in here. A little blendy blend. 
you know what? I have decided to change my mind on this painting because this right here on the ends is just annoying me and it's going to be a whole thing to try to work on these little ends right here. This little guy right there on the side. So what I'm choosing to do is I'm just going to go back and make the edges fuzzy and paint them at the very end of the painting. Right now I'm just going to worry about what I can see on top of the canvas. So I'm just thinking cylinder tones. I'm going to bring over some of that color to bring it over here. Okay, so now that I've got a lot of paint caked on, as I add paint, I'm going to be less cakey. So I'm going to add some white just as a highlight. I'm going to mix it in really light up here. Adding a bunch of white. Mixy mix till a really nice light color. Now what I'm showing you is also the same thing you would do if you were doing, if you were going to paint really dark skin. It's the same thing. The only difference is instead of doing these shades, you would just switch up your shades. You would just have a darker colors of all three of them. But it's really the same idea because we're really what we're doing is we're painting light that is bouncing. That's the goal. We want bouncing light. So, okay, so now I'm just going to work on these, adding just in the middle some white and letting it mix on the palette. I'm going to have to work it and work it and work it. If your paint gets a little tacky, that's good. Like a little, because we kind of want it to dry a little bit. Every so often I'm over here with my paper towel and I'm wiping off some color. I'm not adding any water to my paint because I laid it on really thick. Now since I wiped it off, I'm going to go ahead and blend right here, being very careful that I don't go to the middle of the arm. That's good. I'm going to wipe off my brush and then I'm going to try to blend this side, making sure that I don't go to the middle of the arm and that I don't go to the edge of the arm because I do want the edge of the arm to be pretty dark and thick. I'm really liking that. That's working. I'm going to go ahead and now notice that I'm working in almost lines. I'm continuing, I'm not over back and forth all over the place. I'm just in my one little strip of line that I'm doing and I'm blending that. And you just keep working it. The more you work it, the more your painting is going to start looking like realism and it's going to start looking like a photograph. Now, if you have oil paints, sometimes it is more recommended to use with uh, when painting skin. The reason why I need to add some more weight uh, the reason why is because you have longer time to blend and the more you blend and you even out those colors, the better it's going to be for like looking real. I really like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and with my original dark that I had, I'm going to come back over here and add a little bit more dark over here so then I can work on blending that. Now on purpose, I'm trying to do this so that it's not going to be a 10 day project. I am trying to see if I can get this done in one sitting. 
Now, if you want to, take as long as you need. But remember, if you're in acrylics, they will be drying very quickly. I'm liking that. It's working. I'm going to go ahead and do a little wash on my brush every so often. It's a good idea to put your brush in water and wipe it out so that way you know that it gets a little tad the paint gets tacky on the brush itself and we don't want that I like this oops got a little line there blend 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 okay I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side now what I've shown you here is basically the whole idea of what we're gonna be doing with this whole entire hand we're gonna be thinking of little cylinders. And how would we shade the cylinder? Now, I know it's super simple and we're old and we understand and we've been there, done that. But honestly, it is good practice that if you take a moment and you play with light and if you have like a cylinder object and you can put a spotlight on it, just, you know, a little refresher course to, ah, okay. I mean, I've been painting for many years and I still have moments where I still gawk and stare and look at things. For example, if I see some awesome clouds, I still, after all these years, I still feel like I'm still not perfect with clouds yet. So I'm still working on it. And yeah, so if you feel that you need to, go ahead, take your time, enjoy life. Yeah, I'm going to add a little white here. I'm doing the exact same thing as I was talking about earlier, just working on that blend. So if you see, I have really dark and it goes light and then it goes really dark again. Perfect. I like it. I'm going to go ahead and because I want to have really crisp lines for this arm, I'm going to go ahead and do the hand. Now this is what we're working on here. So I have a bone right here and a bone right here. I have fatty tissue, but really it looks like a triangle. It's really a triangle with a little shadow in the middle, highlighted around and it's triangle. Yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. Go ahead and paint my little edges here. Hmm. Okay, let's see. They would be like this, right? So it's going to be a little lot. Still want to get that wrist in there. And trying to keep the congruency with the line over here so that it makes sense that it would be brought over. So it looks like it's not detached. Ooh, I'm liking that. That's looking great. That's looking really good. Go over here. Add some dark. Okay, so we want that triangle. So I'm going to add some dark here. You know what? Let me work on the cylinder. Once I got the cylinder pretty good, then I'm going to start busting it down into a triangle. Okay, so let's see. We've got some other little colors here. See if we can blend that in. Make sure you're wiping off colors every so often, like you're wiping off your brush. I'm starting to feel that the paint is quite tacky and that's where I prefer the paint to be. I like the tackiness of the paint. I feel that it helps me. That means the paint is drying. Okay, so now let's wash the brush. And I'm going to go ahead and start working on that little highlight right there. Let's see. Oh, peach. I feel like we need to add some peachy tones. So I'm going to go ahead and add peachy tones first. Work that into a blend. And then I'm going to add some more white. Yeah, 
even if you are doing dark colored skin, I still feel that sometimes to add a little bit of warmth in there, uh, the peachy still works. I mean, it really does. We would think, no, 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 that's not, no. But really, yeah, because you have blood under your skin, there are hues that are directly under the skin that we can kind of like see a little bit. Just like, I'm sure you've seen when a geisha, when she does her makeup, like you look and yeah, she's super pale and white, but yet she still has a look of fleshy undertones. Like there's some blood going on underneath there. I don't feel like I added enough here. So that fleshy fleshiness, we want to keep that in mind with the colors that we pick. That there's some blood flow, there's some life. We don't look like vampires. Unless that's what you're going for, which could be totally cool. Oftentimes when I paint like that, I really don't add because they're supposed to be like dead. So I wouldn't really add those fleshy tones there. Darken this up a little bit. Make sure I have a crisp little line right there. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that I have that going. So now I'm gonna go and add some white to the middle, just to the middle. That's gonna be where the highlight is most prevalent. Make sure camera's still going, audio still good. Yep, gotta double check every once in a while. Okay, I feel like I blended a little too much. Feel like I just went a little too overboard with that. It's okay. We'll just keep working, working, working. Until we finally get something that we're happy with. Now, if you don't fuss too much with the blending, it can look really cool and very modernistic looking, which could be a thing, you know? They could be like, ooh, look at that painting. So sometimes you kind of, you know, don't fuss too much. Let her be. That's working for me right now. I might come and fix that a little bit, but so far I'm liking what I see. Okay, we've got a little bit of a triangle. We got the thumb. So I'm going to go ahead and trade to the same exact brush, just smaller. So the same round brush. I recommend using the round brush over, I recommend using the round brush over a square brush for this. Okay, so I got my sides going on, pretty dark. Now the nail, that's gonna come at the very end. So I don't need to fret a whole lot with it. Got my little dark going. Cause it dried, I added another layer. Gonna have my peachy middle area. I feel like I'm caking on too much paint here. And I got some peachiness going on. I'm just gonna go ahead and blendy, blendy, blend. Got too much paint. I'm gonna need to wipe some of that paint off. I use a new paper towel now. Now I'm wiping off the water because every time I wa wash my brush, I like to wipe off the excess water. I am using very thick bodied paint, which is my preference. Um, I feel that uh, thick body paint is more for professional quality grade paint. Yes, it is a little bit more expensive, but I feel like you get what you pay for. If you paint with really cheap paints, I feel that what happens is the quality of your end result won't be that good. It's basically like the same theory 
as uh, cooking a steak. If you cook a steak and it's not a good cut of meat, your steak's not going to be nummy. It's kind of like that with painting, I feel. I'm really liking this painting. There are moments where I think, ah, oh, it's not happening. Nothing I'm doing is working. And then it's, voila, and it works. And I'm like, yes! And then there's moments where I'm like, eh. Add a little bit of white right in the middle because that's the highlight. Okay, here we're starting the triangle. So this is going to come over because it is a highlight. Going to have the highlight going in the middle. There we go. Bring that highlight over. Oh, that was a lot of white. Be patient with yourself. Good things come in time. But at the same time, keep in mind, we don't want to be painting forever. We want to complete this painting someday. I've had many students where they get discouraged and they stop. Don't do that. Even at this point, if you're not liking what you see and it's just not working out for you, continue. At least you're learning, you're practicing, you're working on it. Don't give up. Keep on keeping on. Otherwise, you're never going to grow as an artist if you give up so soon. I just saw a meme recently that I thought was so true. Um, be grateful for the bad relationships that you have because they have taught you to be truly grateful for the good ones when they come along. Long. So that way you have a good perspective of what a good relationship is. And I feel like that's the same with paintings. Be good to yourself. Sometimes if it's, you know, let it happen, let it be what it is and try to see what you can learn from that experience of that painting. And if you're totally rocking this painting, great job. You're doing great. I'm blending, just letting that, the, the letting the I think the, um, sorry, I get so into what I'm doing. I'm like, really, I'm, I'm really, I'm like in my moment of zen here. If you got some music I want to listen to, go ahead and put some tunes on. Yeah, I paint with tunes all the time. The only reason I chose not to at this moment is because I have so many students that take my classes and I didn't want to put music that somebody would be like, Ooh, what the hell is that? <laughs> so that's the only reason I don't have music on right now, but go ahead, put some music on in the background, whatever, whatever you got going on. I have noticed too, that when I do music, sometimes that music, like it kind of influences my style. So like I've noticed that if I'm listening to like techno, then my paintings come out very modernistic. If I'm listening to country, they I tend to get a little depressed. Um Yeah. So I don't know. It's all in the moment. I'm gonna add just a little bit of white here. Sometimes it's okay to add some pure white. It sounds counterintuitive, uh, even if you're doing it in the darker tones, because it just seems weird. Why would I add that color? It doesn't make sense. But look, it's blending. It's lightening up the colors I already have that are there. It just, it works. Little by little. Okay, so now we're going to move on to this section right here. We're going to, it's it's a cylinder. Okay, we've got the little triangle right here. And now we're going to keep in mind there's two joints. Okay, there's a joint here and there's a joint there. But first I'm going to work on the cylinder. After I get the cylinder to the way I like it, then I'm going to start kind of putting in those joints. Okay, so let's 
So I'm going to start with a little bit of the dark on the edges just so I can have a mixing color. I know that I added the, the base coat, but this is just to give me some paint to mix with. I like this. I added a little right there. See this part, this little fleshy tone? I added it right there. There's a little bump. So I'm going to add that little bump. And then I'm going to have this line here. There we go. Okay, so now wash out your brush a little bit. I mean, I do feel the more you're washing out your brush, the more, the better you're going to be with the mixing because the more you're really working on that mixing with the extra different colors and shades. A little peachy tone in there. Gonna come up here. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and blend what I have here. Oh, blend, blend, blend. I have noticed that when I teach my classes, women who, oh, oh, geez, I went too far out in the dark there. Um, I've noticed that women who, or well, anybody really, who uses a lot of makeup and has studied makeup tutorials and is really good at putting on makeup tend to have a really easy time when it comes to blending and in painting. So if you're having issues and I'm not explaining it good enough, I recommend watching some makeup tutorials that talk about foundation. And let me tell you what, I feel like when I started putting more emphasis and learning, like shadowing and all that with makeup, I feel like it upped my game with painting. Just like learning the concepts. And also like one of the things when I was in school that we I studied was anatomy. Oops, I bumped the camera. Make sure that I'm still in focus and view here. Yes, still very good. Okay, so um, I studied anatomy, and okay, obviously, I know where the arm goes. I know where the leg goes, but it goes above and beyond that. It's it's knowing the, the little bones and all the little, I mean, there's a million bones in the hand, and just really having a grasp where you've paid attention, you've looked at it, you got an idea, you put a lot of thought and effort. And then when you come back and you try to paint, oh my goodness, things just start happening. You're just like, oh yeah, but that one bone and it's a little more fleshy right here than it is right there. Okay. That's what I got going on. Now it is really good if you can, if you have the opportunity to have a hand model and somebody that can be there but it's very impractical. Um, Even when I was in school, like it, I mean, we had, there were classes where we had a live model and those were pretty cool. But um, going right, right now where I live for a model to, but like professional, okay, we're not talking anything creepy or nothing weird, but the going rate in my community, I live in a small town, is around $45 an hour to pay somebody to want to be a model. And I don't know, like, eh, I get it. But at the same time, like, I'm good. The internet works really well. Um, oftentimes I do take photographs of like different things and I see stuff like, um, like, well, anatomy books for one thing. Um, yoga poses, books that have people doing yoga poses or that, that totally works because then you to to pro to see like length and okay well the leg is this proportion to the arm to proportion to the head um that's like a thing okay so yeah triangle's sort of happening it's coming 
going to take a while. We're going to work on it. We're going to work on it and finally we'll get there. Everything I'm doing is the exact same concepts and ideas as what we did with this arm. The only thing is we're thinking cylinder, triangle, cylinder, cylinder, triangle, cylinder. Knuckle, so I want to start thinking about straight lines and bended lines. Fatty tissues. Fatty tissues tend to come around a little bit. Hold on, we're right here. So we are, this fatty tissue is here, which has a little bit of a highlight because yes, we're following the bone structure, but then we got that little fatty tissue going on. So we're gonna give that a little pop of highlight right there. So it's a shape within a shape. Be patient with yourself. Good things come in practice and in time. Okay, I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna let it go. I'm gonna give it some time to dry. Okay, so now we've got another cylinder and another cylinder. So remember, start with the dark on the outside, other dark on the outside as well, and they're kind of rounded. This is a rounded and rounded, because see, I've got this is rounded, and I've got this part is rounded too. Um, we got this, this, and this, so there's three of them actually, which I've only made two. How silly of me. I've only made two. Well. You know what we could do is I made two, but it's like doing this. So we could do one large one because this knuckle is straight. So we're gonna do one large one and one little bump for the finger. So we're gonna extend. This one's gonna extend a little bit. Well, we're gonna, I think I already have a little bump there. And then we got the knuckle. We do want the knuckle to stand out just a little bit, not much. Which is kind of what we should have done over here. Have this knuckle a little bit protruding, just a little bit. And then, the, of course, in front of the nail is gonna be very straight. Let's put some fleshy tans in there. Fleshy tans. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and turn my painting to make it a little bit easier on myself. So that way I'm not stretching all over. I'm going to make sure I am still here in the camera. Okay, everything's working good. So. Go ahead and blendy, blendy, blend. Now I'm more focused on the fleshy part of the finger than I would be for the than I would be for the nail part. Fleshy part of the finger is not-ish. Okay. 
Now I do want to have that little bump for the, for the, oh, it's too much of a bump. For the knuckle, keep the knuckle in mind. Okay, I think I have plenty of paint. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and blend. And bring it over some of the color so I have some continuity now remember the more you fuss with it the more it's going to start looking like a photograph If you are not caught up with me, don't worry. It's fine. You can pause the video, stop and start. The main important thing is don't get stressed out. Let it be what it is. Got a little bit of white highlight in the middle there. Don't need to worry about the nail a whole lot. hand to try to get an idea. I'm going to let that be for now. Otherwise, I'm going to drive myself crazy. Now, I feel like this is all beautiful and wonderful, but there are a few things that I just want to do a little bit of a touch up before I start with the next hand. I'm going to give myself an extra little layer here of paint because I kind of went over that blue a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on its side on purpose so that way I can see my painting from a different angle. I recommend from time to time you get into the practice with your paintings of doing that. Seeing them from a different angle, standing up, walking away, and looking them at them from a distance, looking at them up close, giving yourself a bunch of angles to look at. Oops. A little light there. Go ahead and blend a little bit more. Now I am using my smaller brush. Earlier I was using the bigger brush to do this. So I feel like it's gotten too light. That's okay. We'll just add a little dark and darken it up.
Now you could be totally super silly with this and do like sunburn skin. The only thing you would do is add more peach and red tones to the skin, but it'd be basically the same idea. It'd be a really silly, funny painting. Like if you're at the beach hanging out. Hard to get that straight same tone again that I had earlier. Very difficult. I'm liking it. That works. Yes, that looks very nice. Okay, so now I feel like we have a chubby. We have a chubby right here. That chubby has not been addressed. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to work on that chubby. Move your chubby, 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 chubby. Okay, so this is, I'm going to have to let that be on there for a minute to let it dry because I want to cover up some of that blue. So I'm going to go ahead and just work around here while that dries and then I'll come back to it. I'm going to go back over what I did here because I'm being a little bit of a perfectionist right now. And I just want to make sure the continuity is there. I'm just going to give it an extra layer. Just working on it, having a good time. I'm really enjoying this painting. Yeah, I gotta let it sit. Right, one rule, let it sit, and then we'll come back and work on it. <sighs> Let's see. Not work. The thumb is not working for me. I mean, this is working for me. That's what it is. It's like this, right? It's too much. I feel like you need some blue. Mm. Too late. Too late. It is what it is. We're going with it. I don't want my photo, my painting to look like a photograph. I want it to look like a painting. Now, I have noticed um, that the hands tend to always be a little bit lighter than the rest of our body. We never really think of it that way, but it's totally true. Like, stare at your hands for a minute. Try it, and like, if, you, if, if it's daytime, go outside and look at it in the natural sunlight. And there's the parts of our bodies that are more exposed to the sun regularly tend to be lighter. This is true for dark skin tones as well. Oh, 
Oh, geez. It's okay, it wipes off because it's all dry over there. I'm gonna go over it again anyways. Add a tiny bit of water just to loosen some of that paint up again. Water will help dilute your paint just a little bit to make it a little bit more flowy if you need it. Try not to add too much water because we don't want our paint to be super flowy. We just want a little bit of flowy. I'm going to take my finger and blend it a little bit with the finger. Just like if I was putting on makeup. It's working. Okay, I'm going to fix this edge a little bit. Just a little bit there. The reason why is so that way when... I go with the other hand, but I can make a nice crisp line and cut it off. Okay, so I made a line. I need to blend it out. Oops. There we go. I like it. Beautiful. It's really coming along nicely. I'm excited to see your painting when it's done. Okay, it's coming, it's working. I'm gonna lighten that little edge up there a little bit. It's still wet right here, so I'm gonna give that a minute. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and work in this area just a little bit while I'm waiting. I need to make some knuckles here. Now the way to do knuckles is you just don't blend as much. You just keep little rough little lines if they happen to naturally happen, like happy little accidences. You let them be what they are and you just let them happen. Okay, so 
it's working. I like it. Very happy. Okay, let's do one last little touch up with this thumb. See, so it's not quite, it's a little tacky. This will come around just a little bit. The fleshy part. Remember that triangle? Which really makes me think of these little areas. I know we're working on the thumb, but we want to make sure we got good colors that seem to kind of match all around. We're building this like a cake, layer by layer, just like we're making a dough. We're adding a little bit of flour at a time. All right, it's happening. You know what I noticed that I'm missing now that I've seen what I'm doing here? I feel like I'm missing uh, um, the, the wrist. I can see that now. Now that I'm looking at it and I'm working on the thumb, the wrist just doesn't seem right. So what I'm going to do is add a tiny little bump, meow-ish. It's going to go out just a little bit. There we go. Yeah, just like I have one here. I'm gonna do one over here. I think I'm gonna have to give that a minute for that to dry over the blue so I could do like a second coat. Or how about we just cake it on just a little bit. Yep, that's working for me. Yeah, how about we just leave it at that? I like it. Go back over here so we get a little bit of that dark color. And that dark color around the fattiness. Yeah, that's working. Okay, so I'm going to say we're done with this hand. It was very fun, very nice. Had a good time. Now... Let's go ahead and work. Make sure that's dry. Yep. We're going to go ahead and do this hand now. The nails, I think, should be the very last thing that we do. So I'm going to go back in with my big round brush because this is a lot of area. And since this is all dry underneath, I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit more of this dark color on the ends. So I have something to blend with. See how that made a really nice sharp edge right there? Sharp edge. A really sharp edge. Might have to go over it a couple of times. There we go. Bring some of that down here. Okay, so now I'm going to go into my peachy color. And I'm going to layer on. Now, Paul is a lot, his, his tone is a lot similar to mine, but I feel like he's more of a white guy. I am a Latino descent, and he is um, Irish-German, so he's kind of a light dude. So I'm going to make him a little bit more. And I kind of need to work fast as well because the paint has already been sitting on my palette for quite some time now. So it's already been drying while it was on the palette. And it's really tacky up here on my canvas. 
and I would really like to mix on the canvas. I could add a tiny bit of water, don't add a lot, just a little, and it loosens some of that paint up really nicely. Let's see if we can blend over here. And we're doing the exact same thing of what we did with this cylinder. I want to think the light is going to, how it's going to bounce off of it. The sides are going to be little shadows. And then the round part that's going to be the closest to us, which would be the middle of the cylinder, is going to be the lightest part. This painting is coming along very nicely. I'm very happy with this one. I am trying to keep my brush strokes so that they go with the way in which the arm is. You don't have to if you don't want to. Uh, you could totally go horizontal. I'm choosing to go vertical just because it's easier on me. I feel like it just goes with the flow of the blending. Really liking the look of it. Going to add this lighter color right to the middle of that peach. And just blend back and forth, back and forth. Now the arm closer to my body over here, it is a little bit wider and thicker. I mean, look, my arm, see my arm gets thicker the further I go down to my elbow. And it gets a little skinnier the closer it gets to the hand. So I'm going to try to kind of keep that in mind here with my, my strokes and how I'm doing this. I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of white right in the middle and I'm going to try to keep the integrity of keeping it in the middle. Highlights. Every so often, remember to wipe your brush off when you're blending. I'm really liking the look down here. Oops, I think I messed that one up. Okay, so, so far so good. I'm liking what I have. Yeah, every so often you need, you need a new paper towel. Okay, I'm going to go on with some dark color here to try to blend that back. Make sure the camera's still going. I'm paying attention. Well, sometimes I get so lost into what I'm doing, I don't pay attention. And I want to really make sure I'm capturing this one because I'm so happy with this painting. I feel like it's really coming together. It's taking quite a long time. I do understand that. Uh, but the end results, they're happening. They're, it's coming together just how I want it to and really liking it. Oh. <sighs>
Okay, um, got to get this part over here. Go ahead and add a little bit of white here to the middle. Just kind of work that in, trying to keep it just in the middle. Go back in some of that dark. Wendy, Wendy, Wendy. go ahead and clean up this edge right here. I feel like I want to turn my canvas again. There we go. Now I can see it from a different angle. Too far, too far. Oh, too much, too much. I feel like I got this thing going on here. I don't... Okay, I like that. That's good. Maybe I could add a little bit more highlight over here. Bring that down just a little bit. There we go. That works wonderfully. I'm loving this arm way better. So since I'm going to a smaller area, I am going to go back to my smaller round brush. I feel like it helps me with detail a little bit better. Go and get the chubbies. Get my peachy color and put some peachy color in there. Peachy color here and a little peachy color there. Little peachy color here and a little peachy color. Oh, you know what? No, nope. this peachy color goes a little bit further. And then that kind of is rounded. And maybe a little peachy color there. So I'm going to go blendy blend. Okay. 
You don't have to do the whole hand if you don't want to. I'm only doing it for the sake of this video not being a million hours. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a little bit more time focusing on my little areas. Make sure that I get that wrist. I feel like the wrist just seems to sell it all much more. Oh, too much, too much. Ah! Oh no! Oh no, blendy blend. Blendy blend. It's blendy. I think I added too much paint. Remember, it's triangle here. We got a triangle going on. wash my breath. Oh, I'm going to leave that. I like that highlight. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add a little highlight over here too as well. I'm liking the highlight on the wrist. Happy little accident. It's just totally working. There we go. in this blend. This blend's working really nice. Okay, so where else can we blend? How about the other side? like a fleshy area. I haven't used any of the really light tones yet. I'm still working on the outside parts of the cylinder. Okay. I think it's good to, we could add some middle parts now. Uh, 
add a little bit more white to that. Okay, I now started noticing that some of my blue is starting to see through a little bit because what happens is wet paint has acetone in it. Odd, huh? Right? But it does. And that's, it's bringing up the colors from underneath. So I'm going to take a quick little moment and dry my painting. I recommend you do the same. look at it from up high see what it looks like yes I'm really liking it I really think I did good on this arm feeling like maybe this arm should have had a bend in it maybe I don't know the wrist still need to work on it not happy with the hands yet but I'm pretty happy with the arms yep so we're still working on the hands I'm going to go ahead and start with a fresh, clean paper towel so I have something to wipe up on. I am going to wash my brush really good, wipe off all the excess moisture, and I'm going to begin anew. So, go ahead and work some of this in. Go back in and get some peach card, which I think I'm going to have to make a little bit more peach. I don't know. Just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to go back in with some dark and try to blendy blend. Blendy, blendy, blend. Now remember to think of the areas as little cylinders. How is the light bouncing off of that cylinder? Okay, so this, this, this is going to have to come more here. I got to reshape this hand just a little bit. This little bump, fleshy area needs to be a little bit longer. And then, I, yeah, that's working. Yes, that's that's good. Have a little bend there because of the knuckle. Gonna do the nail, so it's not a big deal. Okay, so now that I have plenty of paint on there, I'm gonna go wash off my brush, wipe it, and then I'm gonna blend. Just like if I was blending some foundation on. Uh, with makeup. Lots of blending.
your head and add a little bit of white just to the middle for that little tiny highlight and I'm going to work, work it in. I'm going to go ahead and turn my camera. I think it might help me to see it from a different angle for a minute. That's lovely. I'm liking this little moment here. Now I'm going to turn my canvas so I can work on the other side of that finger. Yes, coming along very nicely. I'm going to go ahead with some white right in the middle just to touch it up a little. Oh, I love that blend. Now that little section, oh, very nice, very lovely. Let's go ahead and extend it. A tiny bit of white in the middle. Now I'm not worrying about the nail yet. The nail will come. I'm just still thinking about the cylinder. Yes, I like it. I'm going to give this a little bit more fatty tissue. turn just one more time so I can do the top of the finger. Yeah, that's good. I like that. This working. Okay, so now the center of the hand. I feel like I got the fingers just right. So the thumb and the center of the hand.
I'm liking that. That's coming along really beautifully. Takes patience. The more times that you paint this, and the more you work with hands, the better you're going to get. I feel like that's the case with me. I keep getting better the more and more that I work, and the more that I do this. Little fatty, fatty tin right here. Just a little bit, a little bit of a pudginess. You know what, that's too much. It's okay, I'm gonna wipe it off. Got a little bit of a pudge. Okay, so let's go back into that peachy tone that we had. Oops, a little much, a little much, it's okay, it's okay, it's coming. Need to lighten that up for a minute. Felt like it got a little dark right there. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is blendy, blendy, blend, blendy, 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 blend. Ooh, I'm loving it. Okay, so now for the thumbs. Let's try to figure this out here. Hmm, okay. I'm gonna take a moment and make this a little bit longer. There we go. Okay. So I feel like with the hands, I just really need to get them the thumbs good and then the nails. And I think, yeah. Now, if you wanted to with your painting, you could probably put your initials or right here you could write the name of you and your significant other or maybe you could write the date you could put the date somewhere which would be really cool I 
Okay, so I got a good amount of that of the dark color. I'm gonna go ahead with some peachy tones. I need to add a little bit of water to my paint because it's been quite a while and it's pretty dry. I'm gonna go over here and kind of cake it on a little. Yeah, a little cakey cake's fine. Okay, so now that I've caked it on, I'm going to work the blend. So I'm going to wash my brush really good, wipe off all the excess moisture since I already have tons of moisture already happening. I go blend, 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 blend. Remember, we got a little triangle going on. Okay, so I'm going to work on right here. So we're going to have kind of just seeing the bone structure. I'm going to make it kind of rounded a little bit. I want to be careful I don't really disrupt my hand over here that much. Because I really like what I got going on with the arm. Blendy blend, blend blend. The more you blend and the more tones you get, the more awesomer your painting's gonna be. So just keep working it. is a painting and a half oh boy if you're tired right now you're doing good because I'm tired I feel like my brain has been working a lot and I am very just ugh. but I'm still having a good time I'm really enjoying this it's a lot of fun it's kind of like a highlight of my day I really enjoy painting because I don't have to, nobody wants me, needs me for anything, like there's no ba I don't have a crying baby right now that I need to go attend, I don't, I just hang out, have a good time. The world is not counting on me to have to do something right now. I can just hang out and be me. Sorry, I just felt like I could keep messing with this thing forever and ever and ever. Let's work on the thumb, shall we? So remember, we are saying this is the male hand and this is the female hand and his hand is bigger than mine. So let's see, the knuckle would be Mia.
and it's straight. I don't have to worry about the nail part so much, just a little bit to be able to try to get that fade into the thumb. Oh, oh geez, I was touching my canvas. I'm going to add a little bit of white, just a little highlight there to touch it up. See what that looks like all blended in. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. Gonna make the thumb a little bit bigger. Ooh, there, I think I got it. It just happened. Got it! Gonna let that dark come up a little bit because there's like a wrinkle here. So I'm gonna let that wrinkle happen. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna work on. Well, hold on. Maybe let's get a little bit of there. Let me blend. Okay. I'm going to work on this little knuckle over here a little bit. It felt like it needed a little bit more oomph. See some of that blue shining through? Oh no, it was a little wet here. works. I like it. Bring that down. I know, I know. Let's bring it down a little bit. So what I've decided to do here is I want to make my thumb a little bit bigger down here. There we go. Ooh, I'm liking it. Yes. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. So now is the time where you kind of sit back and you look at your work and you see, is there anything that you would like to change? It's a little shadow there. Not feeling this thumb. Is there anything I would like to change? Yes, there is. Well, I think 
this is good. Now I can go if I felt like, and, and I had time and I wanted to, I could totally go and continue with what I'm doing here. But I really like what I got so far. I'm really happy with this. So for your painting, if you wanted to add maybe your name or the date in which you got married or you met each other or something that is significant to you, you could write it down here. You could maybe add some tattoos. If you want to add some tattoos, I strongly recommend that you dry everything first and then go. And I would recommend using a liner brush, which is a rounded brush that's really long and skinny and comes to a point. I feel like that would be the good way to go with that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to dry my painting as good as I can possibly get it. After I dry my painting, I think I'm going to go ahead and do the edges. Or you know what? No. Let's do some splatters after that and then the edges. So go ahead and when you are super, super happy with how your painting looks and you're happy with your blend, go ahead and dry the whole thing. here I was staring at my painting and I realized that I had a very sharp edge and I would like to blend it out over here just a little bit I feel like it's too sharp of an edge and it kind of was making the hand look a little cartoony so just go ahead and fix it every time that I'm drawing my painting I like to step back let my mind wander and just stare at the painting for a minute and usually I can find my little boo-boos. Oops, I don't know if you can hear that on the camera, but I uh, I have a parrot and uh, she don't talk that well. I mean, she kind of talks well, but that's what those noises are if you hear the bird trying to say, hey, come hang out with me, come play. You know what, since I did that, I'm thinking maybe I should also extend this a little bit out as well. Oh, that bird is very noisy today. I know she's been fed. She's good. I fed her right before I started this video. So I know she's fine. She just wants attention. Okay, I'm going to let that be. I, I'm liking that better. So go ahead and dry everything all the way.
comes the super fun, awesome, awesome part. Okay, so I've got white and I am going to use, let's see, the bigger brush I use, the awesomer, bigger dots I'm going to have. So I'm going to use my big round one. I'm going to add some water and oops, you know what? I need fresh, clean water. So I'm going to go over here and get some clean water for a second. clean water. I'm going to go, since I got all diluted, I'm going to give myself some fresh, clean white. Put a little bit on my canvas, or on my palette. Then I'm going to go and wipe off and clean off my brush really well. Make sure that every time that you're adding paint and stuff, make sure you keep your stuff closed so that your paint doesn't dry out in its, uh, in its containers. Okay, so I'm going to clean out. Yep, got my brush clean. going to add water. A little bit of water to my paint. Mix it around, make it really fluidy and lots of water in there. Nice health. Oops, don't want to get that dirty water in there. Just want to have clean water. Okay, this is good. And now I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to flick. Woo! Now the more you flick, the smaller your little dots will become. I like to get really big ones at first. That's my style. Also, rotate the canvas. Okay, now I go with, and I'm going to put little guys, bunch of little, little, little flickies. Oh, running out of paint. Looks like it's snowing. Down. I want to get a lot of flicks, a lot of awesomeness. Yep, that's cool. I like that. That works. Okay, so before we do the edges, I strongly recommend at this point to completely thoroughly dry everything so nothing gets wiped and goes all weird. We want to keep those dots Dotty, I mean, you can lift up your canvas if you add in enough water and they could run, but that's not the look that I'm personally going for with at this moment. I still want them to stay very dotty. So I'm going to go ahead and dry everything super thoroughly.
painting. I was all in the intention that I was going to go ahead and paint black on the outside edges because of when I was doing the blending I wasn't really paying attention. And now, now let's do the nails. I'm going to take my liner brush, dip it in some red paint, and this is my female hand and this is the male hand. So I'm going to make the nails over here. I'm going to make a little strip. Now this is up to you. You can use whatever color you want. But this is the basic idea on how to paint a nail. Now I like to have nice pretty long nails. So for me, since I'm painting, I'm painting my own hand, I'm going to go ahead and extend it out just a little bit. Make sure that the top part of the nail is really flat. That's pretty. I like it. Let's do a thumb. Now, this is the same hand. Make sure, be careful. I know it sounds silly and it's dumb, but still, please pay attention to which where you're putting them. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing here. Now, this th thumb is kind of overlapping a little bit. So because of that, it's going to come up and over the other thumb. So the top part of the nail is thick and try to make it come out just a little bit so that way it matches the other nail. You know, I think I might need to adjust my light. Remember, every once in a while if you adjust your light, things are just a little bit easier, a little bit better. And if you're using artificial light, I recommend using a light that mimics sunlight. When you paint in a well-lit area, your paintings will be that much more cooler. I'm going to go ahead and give an extra little coat up here to this one. I am using my liner brush to make it way easier on myself. I like that. That's pretty. I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to mix some white with my red and try to make a nice pretty pink color for the male hand. Yes, pink. I know it's a male's hand, but still. Stare at a guy's hand or anybody's hand, whoever you're painting. Stare at their hands for a little bit. See what colors their nails truly are. It's got some blood flow going on underneath there. That's why we got some pink tones. So I went ahead and I mixed a little bit of white to a lot, a, a lot of white to a little bit of red, and it made this really pretty color. I wiped out my brush, made it pretty, and then just added some pink to the tip of my brush. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side, but I'm not going to add it too much, just a little bit. I do want both of my hands to have a different little look to them. I think I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. Perfect. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. But I'm not going to have the nail come out or anything because he is a guy's nail and he keeps his nails very short. There we go. I think just a little should be fine or you know what I'm gonna add a little bit more. Good to step back from your painting for a second. Take a look at it and when things overlap they seem to be more 3D. I like that. It's looking good. I'm going to make that thumb just a little bit wider.
I'm going to have this area rounded. I like that. That works. I'm going to go ahead and just do a little touch up up here just to make it a little bit more darker in the paint. Get a good coat. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit more over here just to give it a good coat. And that's beautiful. Now I have noticed with natural nails that there is a part like we can see so I have paint all over my hands but we can see that on my nail it's a really light here it's a little darker and then of course I do have the white these this one my nails are, are natural right now so this was my long nail a little dark pink and then a lighter pink and I noticed that guys still tend to have this also especially the guys that don't do any manicures or anything I, I find that this is quite normal so I'm going to add some just straight white onto my liner brush and I'm kind of going to add it towards the top here, which ideally would be better if you could wait for your paint to dry before adding this, but I'm going to just go ahead and add it to the top there and let it kind of be like a little fade. There we go. I'm going to do the same to this other nail. And that just makes a little more 3D effect. It gives the more like, remember how we work so hard on the skin? It just makes it a little bit more oomph on the nail. But there's more going on there. I like that. That's good. Now I kind of went a little deeper there, so because I went deeper on this one, I think I'm going to need to go a little deeper on this one over here just so that they kind of, it's like they're making sense over here. I mean, they are two different fingers, but you got to have some kind of congruity. Okay, I'm going to go back and touch up that red just a little bit. Just so I can have a nice sharp edge because this thumb is a little bit above and in front of the other thumb. Ooh, there we go. I love it. Maybe we could do one more little layer on this one to make it good. And yep, that, that's good. I like it. Yes. I feel like it almost looks like a dot. Might have added a little too much, but it kind of is congruent with everything else, so I think it works. Ooh, that's beautiful. I just love this painting. This is a wonderful painting. Yep. Really good painting. Thank you so much for painting with me today. And if you'd love to share your painting, I would love, 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 love to see your painting. Please send me an email.